Nearly 10 years going strong in my portfolio, Bitcoin is still my favorite cryptocurrency, but it could be better. And guess what? We can all play a part in making sure that it continues to improve and get better and stay robust for years and years and decades and generations to come. We now live in a day and age where we have people like Michael Saylor bragging that they're holding more Bitcoin than other countries than any other country in the world, which is amazing. Uh, but that is a type of centralization, centralization in supply. And as we all know that the market cap of Bitcoin is still small enough that a whale can definitely manipulate the price of Bitcoin. If you're holding a lot of that coin and you want to sell it or buy it, you can use your uh, influence in your wealth to affect the price. Now, there's other ways that centralization can lend to influence over the Bitcoin network in much more serious ways than just the superficial price. What I'm talking about is Bitcoin mining. This has been a concern and a growing concern for anyone who pays attention to Bitcoin and who cares about it being robust and continuing to thrive in the future. I know we are in a bull run and most people People who are watching cryptocurrency videos today aren't really interested or even maybe know the intricacies of Bitcoin mining. Today's video is going to serve as an introduction for some, as a reminder for most others. I know there's several of you who are watching this video that actually care. And please stick around for the end of this video because I will give you tips on how you can help solve this problem. Isn't that great? Don't you love a free market and a peer-to-peer -peer network that anyone can take part of? Amen, I do. Okay, so let's get right into today's video. Bitcoin mining should be thought of as the engine that runs the Bitcoin network. Miners are the computers that do the work to get blocks, fill those blocks with pending transactions. And if they do so fast enough, they are rewarded with both the Bitcoin transactions paid by those transactions and, uh, that are included in the block. They're also paid by newly created Bitcoin, which is called a block reward. Now bear with me, I'm not gonna get in the weeds too much. I'm not gonna get too technical, but what miners do is they use specialized computers, specialized hardware that is really good at solving complex mathematical equations and each miner is competing against the next guy who has a very similarly fast and powerful computer trying to solve that mathematical equation first so that they get the chance to get the block fill it with transactions and get paid in Bitcoin. So in that way, miners are the ones that keep the network going. They keep the transactions flowing. They are the ones setting and establishing the history of all Bitcoin transactions and thus the network. Now, what kind of computers do these miners use? Way back in the day in 2009, 2010, you used to be able to do it on your computer, on your laptop at home. Just let it run, you know, all day, all night, as long as you can. And you can mine 100 Bitcoin every 10 minutes. That's what Satoshi and Hal Finney and all the early guys in, in Bitcoin were doing, which is really cool to think about. But nowadays, the competition has ramped up and we have what are called mining farms, huge industry. The Bitcoin mining is now a huge industry involving millions, possibly, probably, billions of dollars worth of investment and equipment and infrastructure supporting the mining of Bitcoin. And the miners now are using what are called ASICs, very specialized hardware specifically designed for mining Bitcoin. You know, you buy a computer today, you can do all sorts of things with it. You can browse the web, you can render videos, you can do a lot of things. But what miners use are computers specifically designed just for mining Bitcoin. And so they're really good at it. So what to do if you can't afford an expensive ASIC or you only can afford one and you can't compete with the huge mining farms that are now prevalent in Bitcoin mining today? Well, well, there are things called mining pools where you can participate in a pool of other people wanting to mine Bitcoin. You can combine your computing power and in that way, any rewards that are given to you are shared among the group according to the amount of computing power they have attributed. So in this way, Instead of, let's say, you have a small little mining rig and you're up against these huge mining uh, industry players and you might get lucky. Maybe in 10 years you'll mine 
and get one block. You'll get one block reward and the transaction fees involved in that. Maybe. <laughs> and what a mining pool does is it equalizes uh, the amount of energy and time you put into it. And you might get a, a less of a reward because it's being distributed, but it's occurring more regularly. So give and take, you know, you might hit the lottery once in 10 years, or you might get a st or you might get a st more steady paycheck. So a lot of people are participating in mining pools specifically for this. Also, mining pools make it much more easy for you to participate and help to support in the security of the Bitcoin network. Because you aren't solely responsible for the technical setup of your mining rig, you are attributing your computing power to uh, another company, essentially, that is doing all the hard work and you're much more passively getting an income. So how does this affect Bitcoin and how does it make it centralized? Though that's such a dirty word, I would much more rather be saying it is becoming more and more decentralized. But what we're seeing today and the stats that I'm going to be giving you uh, in, a, in a second in this video is probably going to shock you. And I hope that it shocks you into taking this seriously and taking the next steps, which I'll be providing at the end of this video. So 56% of all computing power that is attributed towards mining Bitcoin, 56% of this they call hash rate is controlled by two mining pools. One is from the USA and the other is from China. No surprise there. Uh, the first one from the USA is Foundry. This one is owned by DCG. Uh, the guy behind that one is Barry Silbert. Other huge popular crypto, co uh, crypto companies under the umbrella of DCG involve Gemini, Genesis, Coindesk, and a lot of others. So also they have um, one, the top two mining pool, Foundry. Important note about Foundry as well, super popular, super not private. You have to have, you have to go through KYC and AML uh, protocols giving up all of your personal information, you are fully identified as a participant in this mining pool and all of your mining rewards are achieved not in a private or anonymous manner. And the other mining pool from China is Ant Pool, also fully KYC. Ant Pool has some interesting history I will be going over a bit with you, I bet you didn't know. Uh, so a little bit of history here, Bitmain, is a company out of China. The former CEO of Bitmain is Jihan Wu. Here's some interesting facts about him. He is a crypto evangelist in his own right. In 2011, he was the first to translate the Bitcoin white paper into Chinese. In 2012, he held the first Bitcoin denominated IPO in an effort to fund the creation and the development of application specific integrated circuits just for mining Bitcoin, also known as ASICs. And this is still the preferred and much popular used uh, hardware devices, the ASIC miners that are used to mine Bitcoin today. But Bitmain, the creator of these mining uh, rigs, these mining hardware, owns Antpool and a lot more than that. They say that Antpool is like the pool of all pools and Bitmain in fact indirectly controls all the other uh, Bitcoin mining pools in China. Bitmain has achieved this kind of indirect control over these mining pools in China by providing a service that can ensure against bad luck in the pools. But this requires the mining pools to use Bitmain's templates and services and also to pay an insurance, which is then distributed later on. And it obviously leads to a lot more centralization in mining. So basically what I'm saying here is that mining pools have kind of gotten out of control. And they really benefit from the economies of scale. They've reached a size where the cost of production is distributed enough, they're more efficient and the benefits reflect that. As if that's not bad enough, I found this out researching this video, it shocked me. So here's some facts for you. 40% of all newly mined Bitcoin is run through 
one single custodian. Another way to put it, 47 out of every 100 newly mined Bitcoin are run through one single custodian. What is that custodian? Kobo. And this involves the US mining pools and Chinese mining pools. It's everyone is funneling through this one centralized payout distribution custodian solution. And keep in mind that Foundry in the US and Antpool in China are fully KYC. That means that an incredible amount of newly mined Bitcoin Bitcoin is identified and is, you know, there used to be a premium on virgin Bitcoin because, uh, you know, it had no transaction history. It couldn't be linked back to any kind of CD uh, transaction history. But now it's really moving for so far in that direction where they can say exactly who is responsible for mining it and who was the first owner of that Bitcoin as well. The sacrifice of privacy is starting at the very get-go when Bitcoin is being created. That is truly disappointing. And this custodian, Kobo, they know who is using their service. They know who they're distributing the rewards to. So that information that they have is highly important and probably already being tapped into by whoever wants to know probably U.S. and Chinese governments just saying. The saddest part is, is that that type of information is only protected by decentralization, the complete opposite of what we're seeing happening right now. Okay, okay, okay. So don't freak out. Don't freak out, you guys. This is, again, a peer-to-peer -peer network. It is, you are free to participate it as best you can. And at this point, it is in all of our best interests to do so whenever possible. So, if you have an interest in learning how to mine, I commend you and I want to encourage that. I don't care if you have computer expertise. I don't care if you have the ability to invest in a really expensive mining rig. What most matters is you have an interest and a drive to make that happen. And so with that, time will uh, develop where you can actually play a huge part in hoping in helping to decentralize the Bitcoin network. And here are two mining pools that you can please explore and consider joining yourself, especially if you are currently uh, participating in a mining pool that I mentioned today and Antpool and Foundry. There are a few others that even though they're not in the top two, they're, they're of a sufficient size where maybe, you know, we should see more decentralization even there. So check out Stratum V2. I'm going to put links to all of, to both of these options down below in the video description. Also, you can check out Ocean Pools. No KYC required with that one as well. Try to search out smaller mining pools. So if this video at all helped you understand the status of Bitcoin mining or helped you to be encouraged to play a bigger part in its decentralization, then I think this is an amazing video and I'm really glad that you watched it till the end. If you want to know what Toby and I are doing with our cryptocurrencies, how we're trying to keep them safe and advocate for more decentralization in the cryptocurrency space, no better place to look than learningcrypto.com. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you hit like and subscribe, see you later.